Okay, good day, everyone, and thanks for joining us here on Social Selling Wednesday. We are here every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific time to talk about sales, social selling, LinkedIn, Twitter, and there's usually a lot, a lot of other subjects that, uh, that that get included as well. But we, uh, but but we always have fun, and we always try to give you some good information that you could use in your sales and social selling activities. My name is Bob Woods. I'm a social business strategist at People Links, as well as executive vice president at Social Sales Link, doing coaching and training and the whole social selling, LinkedIn, Twitter, blah, blah, blah kind of thing. Glad to see you here. Um, we normally have Ted Pedromo here, but he is uh, literally in a plane above uh, the USA somewhere, not really sure where he's going. So he's not able to join us today. We may have a couple of other uh, social selling coaches popping in and out uh, during our time here. But uh, Michael from the UK is most definitely here and uh, let's have him introduce himself. Thank you, Bob. Great to be here. My name is Michael De Groot, Chief Storyteller at StayingAliveUK.com and pretty much on a journey of social selling, LinkedIn and something called whiteboard animation. Great to be here. And hopefully we'll share some nuggets and tips, ideas with you to take into your social selling journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, just to let everyone know, we do watch the chat window here for not only chat, but uh, questions as well. Uh, we get to those as soon as we can as, uh, as the conversation goes along. And uh, we also have a couple of seats open for people to come in and join us live, whether or not they want to share them or show themselves uh, via camera is uh, is fine. We can go either way, but um, uh, you know, definitely your voice will be on the air. But we would love to have you on uh, to talk about uh, what what we just discuss here live every week. So the first part of our show always has to do with um, changes that we've noticed on LinkedIn. In, in the past week or if there's something that's popped up that, that's important in the past couple of weeks. Michael, do you have anything for us today? Yeah, I, I, um, I've noticed something that I think is in the process of being changed okay. and isn't yet fully embedded or it doesn't look like it's working 100% of the time. Okay. And that is to do when somebody accepts your invitation request. And um, I noticed last week, I don't know if we managed to talk about it last time, because this it kind of flows into so many other things. But yeah. I noticed that um, on the messaging thread, so in messages, mm -hmm. you now have a for that individual there is a notification in there that says this person is now a connection and that then allows you to start a conversation going you know when they've just connected mm -hmm. but unfortunately it's not a hundred percent consistent so i've only seen it about three times occur for me and it hasn't been happening since now connected with that I've noticed that I wasn't seeing as many messages, if any, uh, in the relationship tab on the profile, right? So if you message people, they should, mm -hmm. all the message messages should be appearing there, excuse me. And mm -hmm. um, what I noticed a couple of weeks ago, they weren't appearing anymore. But now I've noticed that somebody sent me a message with a subject line and the subject line said, wow, right? And then there was the rest of the message. Mm -hmm. Now there is like a hyperlink, the wow word. So presumably the subject line of the message, I guess, mm -hmm. um, is clickable. Well, it's never been clickable in the messages in the right in the relationship uh, card. So when yep. you click on that, it takes you to the, all the message thread with that individual. So it takes you to messages. It doesn't keep you inside the message thread in the relationship tab. It takes you over to messages. I'm not sure if I'm making any sense, 
It's a pity. Yeah, I it, it makes sense to me. A pity I, I could demonstrate it. Um, and we might, if we get a chance, I might share my screen because you can do that now. So, right. So that those, the whole thing on messages is there's something going on. I can't put my finger on it, and maybe we'll see a big change coming soon or a subtle change. Yeah, because I know that um, it's come up once in the past couple of weeks, and 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 with the LinkedIn merger and a couple of other things, our conversations have been much more free flowing in the past couple of weeks than than they normally are. But um, but I have. Um, I do remember you saying that, and yet I've, you know, I, I've, I've reached out and and I've done connections and, and everything, and I have yet to notice um, mm. anything in my messaging. So maybe you know it's one of those uh, you know infamous uh, LinkedIn phase rollouts type of thing, and whether or not you see it is based on the uh, gods at LinkedIn, basically. So um, I'm going to go ahead and let somebody in, and actually. Let's make sure he can get in. This is a gentleman I used to work with once upon a time in my television days back in the uh, late 80s and, and early 90s. Hey, hey. There he is. Hey, all Mr. right. Good. How you hey, doing, Bob. sir? Oh, just great. Just great. Good. How are you? Doing, doing very well. Doing very well. Thank you. So this is so this is our little thing that we do here every Wednesday. Um, uh, uh, sometimes we get a lot of people. Sometimes we don't. It just depends. And uh, but we do make it available via uh, podcast on several different channels as well, so that uh, so that people can can listen in later. So um, cool. And we just we we talk about LinkedIn sales, social selling, uh, you know that 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 type of thing basically. So right now okay. we're talking. Uh, right now we're discussing changes that we've noticed in the. LinkedIn LinkedIn platform in the past couple of weeks, and and Michael just addressed one, and um, and and if you were done, Michael, I'll go ahead and go to mine, which is not necessarily a change on LinkedIn's part as much as it is a change that everyone should be doing themselves, basically, and that's um, and that's changing passwords. So let me bring up the article. Uh, as some of you may know, a couple of years back, um, LinkedIn was hacked in 2012, and uh, a bunch of um, passwords were were taken, and you know various nefarious things were done, as does happen with those types of things. So um, about a month ago. Um, there was a hacker who started offering for sale the database of 167 million accounts, including um, emails and already cracked passwords of about 117 million users. So, um, so, so this means basically, in my opinion, uh, that anyone who has a LinkedIn account should probably do at least one thing, and if not two things. Number one, change your password absolutely change your password um uh you know your 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 information out there is just never good and especially when it comes to linkedin and your professional reputation because that's how we all brand ourselves in on linkedin is you know that's our professional reputations and our professional networks are out there and everything else so you don't want to have other people having access to that obviously and even taking over your account and you know creating all kinds of havoc for yourself professionally speaking so i would absolutely encourage people to change your LinkedIn password, especially if you were on LinkedIn in 2012 and you're like most people and up until a couple of weeks ago, it was myself included, you just don't change um, passwords because it gets too convenient or it gets stored in your uh, browser and you never even think about changing it. So that would be one thing. I would absolutely change that. I would absolutely change the password there. The other thing that I, that I have done um, which I don't know if it's helped or not, but I just certainly feel better about having it is enabling two step authentication. So this means that uh, whenever you try to log into LinkedIn from a different type of source. So in other words, if you've logged in on your um, on your desktop and you've just downloaded one of the mobile apps, but you haven't logged into it yet via the mobile app. Um, 
when you do that first initial login, it will say, we will send you a code and then you enter that in. And at that point you're in and then it, um, and then it texts you a code to your, uh, to your mobile phone. I would absolutely positively encourage everyone to enable two-step authentication too. Now it can be a little bit of a pain. It's not a huge pain. I mean, you know, two-step does mean there's an additional step involved, but, um, it's, it's helped me out personally in one case. It wasn't with LinkedIn. It was actually with my GoDaddy account. Someone someone had um, ended up guessing my uh, my password and it, and it tried to log in. And this was like on a Saturday about a year ago. And I kept on getting messages that someone was trying to um, access my account. But because I had two-step authentication, in there, they were never able to actually get into my account. So I just went in, change, change the password and change my username and everything else and all that stuff ended. But I mean, but that's just one example of where not having two-step authentication would have really messed me up because I've got quite a few domains that I manage. And if somebody would have gotten in and, and switched around all that stuff and changed passwords, it just would have been a nightmare. So um, I absolutely would encourage people to change the password and enable two-step authentication. So that so, is, so a, a, yes. A, I did this a few weeks ago and, a, and okay. a, word of, a word of not warning, but advice. Sure. <laughs> if you're using apps that are connected to your LinkedIn account, yeah, they will all disconnect. Yep. <laughs> so if you're using a scheduling account like Buffer or Hootsuite or anything else like that, or mm -hmm. you've got other apps that you you use that have to authenticate with LinkedIn, they mm -hmm. will disconnect. And next time you go into the app, it will ask you to log back in and it will do the two step authentication. Authentication. Yep. So I had to do this, I think, about eight times. In right. the end, eight or nine yeah. times in the end, because I had so many different things that were connected to LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. But yeah. once I've done it, I've never had another message again. So it's cool. Right. Yes. Yeah. So so there is a bit of initial pain, especially if you're like Michael or myself and you've got, you know, a bunch of things flowing in and out of LinkedIn. But once it's done, I mean, you really do have peace of mind at that point that that nobody else is, is going to be able to um, to uh, to mess with your stuff on LinkedIn, basically. And that's and, and that's the goal. So a little bit of pain, I think, is is worth a lot of peace of mind in, in the long run. Great. So very good, very good. Roger, do you have anything to say about that? Oh, not really. I just uh, saw the thing pop up on on Facebook about your meeting, so I was just curious to see what you guys you were up to. So that's oh, sure, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. These these days, yeah, basically, I'm doing, it's a yeah. These yeah, days, I'm doing ahead. online teaching and um, uh, oh, thinking yeah. about actually um, getting into the online publishing game. So. I'm working with someone to put a course online. I'm going to be uh, videotaping a bunch of lectures coming up in July and uh, see see what kind of platform I want, might want to host it on, that kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. In fact, Michael and I are involved in a um, in a live video coaching type of platform ourselves called mm -hmm. called Social Sales GPS. We're in alpha testing right now on that. But um, mm -hmm. but for that, we use a uh, customized WordPress site along with GoToWebinar, basically. Oh, so, okay. yeah. 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 So with uh, so with that, what we do, um, we're we're still kind of hashing out and this is why it's an alpha test. Uh, we're still kind of hashing out exactly what the format's going to be for for our individual classes. But we usually um, start out with like a, um, a, uh, a tip or two. And then and then we actually go into coaching at that point with whoever is on the webinar at that point. And because um, and because it we're we're using go to webinar we can actually uh pop up other people's um linkedin accounts and things like that and we're able to coach them live based on what we're seeing in their in their linkedin accounts or basically whatever else they 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 want to show us basically so so it's true group coaching to anyone yeah. that has a um a, a web browser basically oh sounds really cool yeah yeah 
Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. We're just getting underway, and it's and it's really exciting. We're we're all looking forward to it. So, so, so we basically kind of know what you're going through right now. Yeah. <laughs> basically. <laughs> <laughs> at least it's by yourself we've um uh, we've got nine coaches total so so mm -hmm. so sometimes it gets a um i don't know if unwieldy is it is the word michael but um interesting but, uh, interesting yes <laughs> interesting. i like that word that's a good way to put it. yeah that's yeah. a very good way to put it but but the really cool thing about all of us is that um because we're all doing the same thing and we all basically have have the same types of opinions about how we're coaching and what we're teaching and everything else it's 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 actually a whole lot of fun more than more than anything else so um so it's all very cool and michael just put in the uh the uh, link to uh join our alpha testing program so so we are so we are out and about um actually roger if you want to go ahead and join yourself and just see how 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 we do things you know please please feel free to to, to sign up you get uh, you get uh, free social selling coaching in the process too so so okay. we're obviously not charging during our our testing period so okay okay so that's down in the lower corner yeah. there at least. right yeah okay. yeah so yeah so when so when we do these blabs you know obviously people can can call in call in if if there's mm -hmm. an available seat otherwise we're always monitoring the um the uh, chat for uh for questions and comments that pop up as well oh, okay and that's how we use blab and 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 you can make blabs private they generally do record blab sessions although sometimes we have problems uh getting getting the actual recordings uh, sent to us but uh, mm -hmm. that happened well actually it happens about 25 percent of the time oh. when you say michael <laughs> it's not been too bad it's not been too bad <laughs> yeah it's been better lately is yeah. Blab a free service? Yeah, Blab is free as of now. Uh -huh. Who knows what's okay. going to happen? But yeah, yeah. so so for now, Blab is free. Yep. Okay. Well, it's a very cool little service too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm working with a guy who's um, oh, he's about a hundred miles away. So I'll have to try that out with him and uh, do some do some tests with that. I t I tell you, if you're going to do some cooperation with somebody long distance, mm -hmm. I highly recommend Slack. For Slack, Slack is fantastic. Slack. And the, okay. and the yeah. other day, Bob, I don't know if you know this, but I had a telephone conversation via Slack with Beth the other day. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember you mentioned that. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah that's a very call, cool thing. You can now call each other via the Internet. And the quality, I mean, I, I, I literally did this you know, on my phone, mm -hmm. uh, it rang on my phone because my mm -hmm. app, uh, it's, it's better than Skype. Mm -hmm. And um, the only thing is if, if you want to do a group call, you've got to pay, but otherwise it's free, mm -hmm. you know, okay. so, oh, sure. and it's super easy in terms of productivity and you just want to give somebody a call, mm -hmm. uh, just do it through your app. And it's, it's okay. it was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and the other nice thing is if you're doing a project with someone, for example, you can actually set up different different projects and invite people to different projects. And it's all within the same Slack interface, too. So you're not limited to just one account to do one thing, basically. In fact, okay. I've, I've got uh, I've got social sales GPS. I've got my people links. Um, uh, uh, the uh, people links channel or it's, it's not a, actually a channel. I, I'm not sure exactly what you'd call it, but all of our corporate um, uh, inf information goes through Slack there. And then we, we have a third social selling kind of open public um, Slack channel as, as well for, for people to discuss that. So, I mean, all of us are huge believers in Slack basically. And it's, mm -hmm. and, and it's really taken the uh, corporate world by, by wildfire. In fact, I I even see commercials for Slack here in in, in the U.S. now. I don't know if I, I don't know if they're advertising in the U.K. Michael, but not yet. There's, but there's been oh there are oh it's been advertised there too. Wow. No no not yet not yet. Oh not oh, yet. Not oh, yet. Oh, okay. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but there, I've 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 noticed several commercials here too. So so they're definitely in growing mode. So I would take advantage of that as, as much as possible right now. Basically. Okay. Well, keep and that and for the future, if you have students. Mm -hmm. that you wish to create a community with. And I know you can do this on other places like Facebook. Yeah. But actually, the, the it's a, Slack is also uh, being used uh, by creating a community. So you can invite anybody that mm -hmm. has, you've got their email address. 
-hmm. and they can create an account and then you can communicate on different channels inside yeah. of Slack. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. and that, yeah. That's a really cool way as well of um, getting everybody involved in it. That's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. The, our course itself is going to be mainly asynchronous, you know, with modules mm -hmm. that they're going to be going through, but we're going to sure. want to keep in contact with people for sure. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's it. Yeah, that's yeah, perfect for you then. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay, good. Well, it was good touching base with you, Bob. We'll have to stay in touch. Yeah, same thing. And, yeah, um, definitely. That sounds great. Yeah, I'm going to try logging into that uh, social sales GPS thing right now and see what Thank happens. You. Okay. Yeah, sure. Love to have you, Roger. Okay, so look. All right, thanks. Goodbye. Bye-bye. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> Helping people out. That's great. So, yeah, very good. Very good. So, um, so let's see. So, let's, uh, so we've already done LinkedIn changes. Um, let's, well, there, let's, was, there was yeah. one thing. Oh, yeah, please. Yep. It's not a big change, but it's an observation mm -hmm. on the LinkedIn app. And I'm paying... I'm paying far more attention to the LinkedIn app these days because there are more very subtle changes happening there than there are on in the desktop. Okay. okay. When you invite somebody to connect to you, we mm -hmm. know there are one or two ways of doing it. You can just click connect and the invite goes off and a standard invitation is sent out, not recommended. Right. Or you can click the three hidden dots at the top right corner and you can personalize the invitation mm -hmm. on that personalization there is now a screen that says you know send send them a message or something in kind of gray writing mm -hmm. but very unfortunate there is a button at the bottom that says invite without message Okay, so think about it. So you're clicking through to send a <laughs> personalized message, right? Mm -hmm. You get to the screen to personalize the message, and they've put mm -hmm. a button on there saying invite without message. And that is crazy. Wow. You know, that wow. is counterintuitive to wow. asking people to personalize the message. So I'm very wow. disappointed by that. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I mean, talk about something that that makes no sense. I mean, it's like doing a save search within LinkedIn and then not enabling the the automatic um, email sending feature. I mean, you know, when when you go in and 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 you do a save search, one of the reasons why you're ostensibly doing it is to get those emails weekly or monthly, and I always suggest week weekly yeah but then there's that one option that says never and whenever i'm teaching that part of linkedin i say i would say i literally have no idea why this option is even there but if you want to click it you go ahead and and my students always laugh and i and guess people are, do not I, want to receive the email they don't that, maybe. yeah 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 i guess but i mean you know maybe what Two percent of, uh, of of LinkedIn sales type users would, would yeah. use that, and it's and it's and it's just like here. I mean, um, your instance is obviously even even more ridiculous because you click through for a reason because you want to send it. I mean, all of those outer hours that it took coding for that button and that feature could have definitely been been used in other places. I think rather than to create that. Yeah. Wow, that's something. Yeah, so that was a real head scratcher for me. Yeah. <laughs> like, you serious? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That is funny. So, uh, <laughs> so very good, very good. So, um, so now we're coming to the just one thing segment, which is, um, which is, which is kind of our time to, uh, to uh, bring up anything that we've thought of that we thought would be helpful to those who use uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, et cetera, for, for social selling. Uh, do, do you want to go ahead and go first, Michael? Yeah. And it's to do with um, profile views. Okay? okay. So, and it depends whether you have a free account or a paid account. If you're serious about social selling, I highly recommend a paid account, a premium account, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I know there are some benefits of having free accounts, but yes. if, if, you, if you're taking social selling seriously and you want to get all the functionality that LinkedIn can offer you, you're going to have to pay a little bit of money for it. 
So with the premium account, of course, you can see everybody who's viewed your profile. Mm -hmm. And um, so I have a, this is, this is a recommendation for everybody to do, but certainly every single day is look at who's viewed your profile. Don't leave it for weeks before you look at that section. Mm -hmm. Because if people have touched you or looked at your profile, then it's a good idea to reach out to them and mm -hmm. ask them what made them look. So one of the, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you what I use. Let me just get it. Uh, and I always call it uh, LinkedIn's version of caller ID, basically. So so that's like a good way to uh, yeah. think of that feature, basically. Yeah. Caller ID. Yeah, mm -hmm. perfect. I mean, generally speaking, I'm interested in people that are second level connection mm -hmm. because we've got somebody in common already. So mm -hmm. it's easier to invite them because they'll see, yeah, we've got somebody in common. They've already viewed my profile. So they've read something or looked at an article or were attracted to something. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, they've got to have a decent profile photo. They've got to have a good profile themselves, fairly mm -hmm. decent, completed, reasonable amount of connections, you know, in the hundreds. Mm -hmm. I would prefer 500 plus even better because you're growing your network that way. Mm -hmm. So I, my, my kind of template sentence when I send the invitation then, because that's what I do. I, I immediately go to their profile and click connect on their profile. I don't click connect inside the, although... <laughs> That's the only area where it will go and allow you to personalize the invitation, but I won't get into right. that. Um, so I say, thank you for stopping by. I'm forever curious. Was there something that inspired you to look at my profile and would you be up for connecting? Thank you so much for wishing you a really great day. And I use an emoji sunglasses one at the end of it. Mm -hmm. So a fairly kind of friendly message I'm asking them to connect with me, but I'm also asking them what inspired you to look at my profile mm -hmm. because it gives me a little bit of insight. What were they interested in, which will allow me to then have a further conversation with them potentially mm -hmm. and then, you know, via email and then hopefully via telephone right. for whatever reason. Yep. Yeah, so, exactly. so for me, that's that. The one thing is, profile views is an is a, you know, I, I don't like the word prospect, but it's somebody who's lukewarm. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, they're lukewarm because they've already mm -hmm. looked at your profile. So you might as well capitalize on it and go, rather than look at the people you may know section and go, okay, they're a second level connection. Let's invite them, because mm -hmm. they have they haven't even they don't even know you yet. Right. So right. they are they are completely cold. Yeah. So that's my my tip for today. And 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 that's an excellent tip as well. And that's something that um, that I teach personally and we teach uh, all of our all of our Fortune 500 clients at uh, at People Links as, as well, uh, how to do that type of thing. So and in fact, it's funny that you mentioned that because um, because my has to do with profile as well. And I promise you, we haven't, uh, you know, to anyone listening, we have not talked about this ahead of time. But we're but in tune, Bob. We're in we tune. We are. We are. <laughs> we are perfect there. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, so, so uh, my just one thing is, is actually about the little things. And if you're listening to this audio only, I'm definitely putting that in air quotes right now because all of these little things are huge in terms of profiles and especially profile views. So, um, so the three things that I always like to highlight as being the absolute most important things are the photo, the name, and the headline. And that's for a couple of reasons. All three of those things follow you around LinkedIn wherever you post, whether whether it's displayed directly or when someone mouses over your name and they see this stuff, or if they're doing searches within LinkedIn and um, 
and 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 even in the uh, basic search box if they if they type your your name in they they will see your photo and they will see your headline as as well so i always very jokingly call those three items your your linkedin stalker because they stalk you around linkedin but this is a good kind of stalker to have basically so um so so with photos um i think the latest figure that i've seen is when you have a photo your your LinkedIn profile is 14 times more likely to be clicked on in any kind of search result as if you don't have a photo. Now there's two, there's basically two opinions that I'm seeing shaking out on photos. One to get that, you know, professional in studio kind of, you know, kind of serious, you know, kind of smiling look with a suit or, you know, if you're a woman with, you know, you know, being in, in business guard. Um, that's one way to do it. The other thing that that I've seen being taught, and I think it just depends on what your job is more than anything else, is showing yourself basically dressed how you're normally dressed during any business day, looking nice, of course, obviously, but um, you know, showing you in in kind of an action type situation, but yet having having your face big enough so that so that people can see you when they're seeing that really shrink down version of your photo as as well. So um, so when people ask me about the difference between the two, I basically just have to say it depends on your job. I mean, if if you're a salesperson. You know, you may want to go with the studio shot, or you may want to go with the shot of you looking present, um, professional, but like maybe in a presentation or something like that. And that could easily be fake too, as long as you have a projector and and PowerPoint up behind you, you can fake that really easily. Um, some people like attorneys and, and people like that, you, you know, the true professional type of thing, go with the studio headshot. But if you're like out and about and you're, you know, like a, um, like a, um, what am I trying to think of here? Like a um, like a gardener or a, a lawn care professional, or I mean, you know, that type of thing. You may want to show yourself more in your element. I'm, you know, still looking professional, looking good, and, and everything else, but showing yourself being out and about in your um, in in your field, which I mean, literally, as a lawn professional would be in the field, <laughs> but um, but <laughs> but. Um, you know, I would say either one of those two, depending on your situation, would would work well. What's what's your opinion on on that, Michael? So, okay, I've, I have a question for you first, and then yes, I'm going to share something funny with you, which apparently yeah. is true. Um, <laughs> but the first question: so, why is the profile photo so important? I just think it's because, you know, especially when you're talking about the situations where people are coming across your name because you've commented on something or maybe you've published something or maybe they saw you in a group or something like that. It's just nice to know that there's a real face there and that and that someone can can connect with that face as well, even even if it's somebody who you don't know at all. It's just nice to know that there's a face there. Now, if you're doing things locally and you mouse over someone, oh, I think I know that person, and then your photo pops up and it confirms that that person knows you, then that's an automatic click through at that point. That's yeah. that's that, that's kind of my two cents on it. Yeah, and it's it's there's an old saying, which I'm sure you know, mm -hmm. and that is people bite people first. Yeah. Right? So th this was we were taught this when we were doing sales and we're meeting people and you walk into the room and the first thing people make their opinion up about you within an instant, right? Yep. It's split second stuff. It's so quick. You mm -hmm. haven't even opened up your mouth and maybe the way you walk, the way you look, even, even nothing to do with the way you dress, but people right. make up their mind instantly. Mm -hmm. So the profile photo on any place on social media right across the board is people make a judgment on you instantly by yes, the way is. you look on your profile photo they either are attracted to it or they are or they are repelled by it mm -hmm. and they go okay no this guy doesn't look right for me to connect to because mm -hmm. look at his photo he's not even looking at the camera he's you know he's miles away um, right you can't 
And it's in the eyes. You know, people are looking into your eyes to see if you're trustworthy. And mm -hmm. obviously the smile pulls people in too. Now, I read somewhere, and I'm, I'm not sure if it was a blog by Buffer or somewhere, because they did a whole blog about profile photos. But I, I, I also found some research, and this is the funny thing, where if you squint just ever so slightly, oh, yeah, you know, man. when you're looking at your profile photo, it seems, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it it means people are more inclined to be attracted to you. I don't know why, but if you kind of start looking like this, you know, like, oh, my well, God, you, look at him. Um, well, yeah, you get those uh, crazy eyes. I mean, when 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 guys get together and talk about females, they, they always talk about the crazy eyes and avoid the ones with the crazy eyes. Yeah, no. So, uh, so I mean, if you're like this, and, and I apologize if you're on audio only, but I'm definitely making a big kind of almost crazy mm -hmm. eye type, type of look right now. Yeah, exactly. J just like that. Uh, I mean... That's I'm, I mean, that is the repelling action of the magnet, not the attraction yeah. part of the magnet. So it's not just the photo, but it's how you are looking in the photo. That's yes. important as well. So, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. So, okay, so profile photo, so name and headline were the other th things you mentioned right yeah yeah so name and that's and that's pretty simple so uh just your name only you can put a designation or two behind your last name but 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 that's about it um linkedin actually suggests that if you have certifications that you use the certification section of the profile to um to highlight your certifications as well. Now that could either be in addition to having it in your name or in place of your name. Um, if, if you start doing cute things with your name, so I mean, sometimes I'll see people um, putting in their first name and last name in their, in their first name field and then the the last name field has like some kind of promo message or, or something Self ridiculous. Fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, cell phone. Yes. Yeah, cell phone's the other big one. Um, I so see I mean, so many people putting their cell, phone cell phones. Yeah. Surname. Yeah. Going, As, really, you're that desperate that you yeah. want people to phone you. Yeah. I That's mean, exactly. There are, there are play Don't put it there. You can put it in other places in your summary. Like the top line of your it. summary. Yeah. The top line of the summary is a great so place. That's high enough, right? Yeah, as yeah, it is. So two things wrong. Well, three things wrong with that. One, all the teasing that we just did about it. I mean, that obviously makes it wrong right there. Two, it makes searching by name impossible. Yeah. Because LinkedIn's um, search, as well as I believe Google's as as well, won't read your name right. So you won't appear in search results when people are searching by name and the other big thing is it also violates the user agreement that you have with linkedin and i mean i don't know if this actually happens but technically you can get your account taken offline because you're not putting name in correctly there yeah basically so i mean for aesthetic reasons and for practical reasons just your first name and last name and if you really want to do a certification or something like that you can put it in there. I would suggest actually using the certification section. And if you really want to highlight that certification, you may or may not know that when you're in edit mode in your profile, you can actually change the order of your sections within your profile as well. I would suggest dragging that up, you know, probably not above um, your experience, but, um, you know, right around your experience, basically, just so people know that you do have certifications. And I do realize that those are important in a lot of professions. I'm not making fun of certifications, but there is a proper way to do it, basically. And that yeah. would probably be the best way to do it. Uh, and then the other thing is the headline. Um, this is one thing that I always promote with with my students uh, for for people links. It actually goes a little bit beyond what we're teaching right now at people links in terms of the uh, recommendation cards within the people links platform. If you want to talk about people links, we could do that offline at any time. But um, uh, but the old thing of, you know, um, just your title and your company. 
I mean, you know, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I would I would suggest that more for people who use LinkedIn as just a resume uh, depository and potentially finding jobs and things like that or whatever. That's fine. Um, once upon a time, people used to stuff keywords in there. That's that's like so 2008, basically. I, hey. I, I, I would I would not do that anymore. So instead, what I recommend is is creating a headline that has that with them, what's in it for me, meaning the person viewing your your profile, um, it, it, that, that it have that type of headline in there so that it's value added. It shows what you bring to the table whenever people contact you about a professional type of question or, or whatever. And it also... Um, and and speaking of my old uh, television experience, once once upon a time, there was a producer at the station that I worked at, who um, when um, when he taught me about writing writing teases through through the newscast and and even just um, and even just uh, beginning lines of a story, he said most of the time people write about or or write with the uh intent of you know why should i care you know why should i the viewer care about that he says the way i do it is make me care so in other words it it goes a little bit beyond that and then you know it's really designed to draw people in so that when they click on your headline then they could read all of your other um information within the profile which is also in that with a value added uh type of format so that people will call you taking online conversations offline one of the main goals of social selling so um with that in mind i wanted to um, i need to go into my twitter here real oh, i'm sorry go into my linkedin really quick here so i'm not looking right now um so so for my my headline, for example, which I'm probably going to change because I change my headline like once a month. I'm always messing with it. Uh, so my headline says helping you to usher in the next step in the sales process, social selling and LinkedIn coaching, training and development. That's value added. It shows what I'm going to bring to the table when people contact me. Do you mind if I if if I go to yours, Michael? No, go ahead. OK. I should have had this pulled up ahead of time. Why? Why is your name not appearing? There it is. So Michaels is advising you to share your story using LinkedIn social selling and whiteboard animation. That's absolutely perfect. So again, it's not his position. It's not his company. It's with them. It's value added. It shows exactly what he brings to the table. Brins is always good. I'm not sure. Brins like me. She she changes her all. Well, no, she, no, it's one thing she probably doesn't change a lot. So Bryn, who is another social uh, selling coach who I work very close with at uh, People Links, um, hers is transforming the way professionals grow their businesses by levering linked leveraging LinkedIn and social selling. So um, the challenge always is, you know, at at that point is. You know, Bryn writes a lot. I write a lot. Michael writes a lot. We've been trained on how to do this, this type of thing. So, I mean, and and you shouldn't do copy and paste of other people's because you'll probably sh uh, end up being in the same search results as these other people and they'll see the same headlines and think that's something funky. You don't want to do that. So in other words, just, um, you know, just think about what value do you bring to the sales process for your company or for whatever it is you're doing and just write that down. And of course, the other thing is you have to keep in mind that there's a 120 character limit, so you can't put war and peace in there, but you know, do it in a short, succinct, yet with some value added way. You um, And then when you combine that with your name and your photo, you should be getting a lot more click throughs to your profile. And then at that point, you can fall back on what Michael just taught in terms of how to use who's used your profile. And like I said, it's fascinating that that we came up with like two different approaches to the same thing. But it's it's all about making connections, whether it's direct business related, whether it's networking related or whatever, through your LinkedIn profile by using who's viewed your profile. Hey, Bob, would you could you t do a little test for me in your LinkedIn uh, yeah. search? Yes. Could you put in the search bar in quotes? Social selling. So two words with a space, social selling in quotes, and just search and see what come who comes up as number one. For me, it's someone uh David Eads, who is a second degree connection of mine. 
uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Good job, David. Uh, you're number one in my search result for that. Um, so we have David Eads, Don uh, Zubak, Lindsey Bogues, Boggs, uh, and then I get a couple of first degree connections as well. But it's interesting that the first three people who show up are second degree connections of, of mine. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. So, and it's it's this shows you that there is some difference in the way the algorithm works because mm -hmm. when I do it, mm -hmm. um, the first one that shows up is me, and then I get it's all first degree connections for the first uh, one, two, actually three, and then it's second degree, and then another first degree, another first degree. So it's all mixed up a little bit. I am um, number like 16 or 17 in this list. But it's interesting that most of the people, and I'm connected with a lot of other social selling coaches yeah. for, for, and just so people out, out there know, know, for whatever reason, social selling coaches actually do connect and talk with, with one another yeah. all the time, yeah. even though we are competitors. I mean, we actually do talk a lot. We even have other social selling coaches in here who aren't, directly connected to us. And it's always a great time. And I think that's one of the reasons why is because generally speaking, social selling coaches are just really good people who really want to share knowledge, even if it's with competitors, basically. But um, it's interesting that I don't have a lot of first degree connections pop up in those first couple of uh, search results. Pages. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So, so here's a, just to add to what you were talking about in terms of the headline, what, mm -hmm. what I do or what I did for myself, and this is what I teach others to do, is the first thing to get clarity on is the skills you want to have on your profile. On your profile, okay. Mm -hmm. Once you have clarity on the skills, and let's say you've got top three or top five skills that you really value and want to be known for, yep. Then use those. Think of them as keywords, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you use those keywords throughout your profile, yep. whether it's in the summary section, experience section, mm -hmm. uh, ask for them to be used in recommendations. Right. And right. then also ensure that some of those keywords, not every single one, but the ones that you value the most are included in your headline. Uh huh. Uh, because those are the things you want to be known for. And those are the things people potentially will search for yep. and it will come up in search results. Yep. So I uh, just without to, making it look like that you're keyword stuffing. That's it. Yeah. It has yeah. to be blended in nicely into yep. the language that you're using and making sure you use the same consistent language. Yep. And and not to have a whole row of those words, you know, on two lines, because mm -hmm. everybody will see through that. Yeah. But it's important to get consistency between the keywords, skills, and having them in the headline. That's why I wanted to mention it, mm -hmm. because when yeah, you're no, writing the headline, make sure you have clarity on the skills that you value the most for yourself. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's a, that's a great way to buttonhole everything that we've just been talking about, basically. So, I mean, you know, use everything that we've talked about uh, in this Just One Thing segment to do a huge thing for you, and that's to get more, more page views for your LinkedIn profile, which, you know, as we said before, should then lead to more offline connections and, you know, either a great connection, um, you know, networking partner or or potentially even even a sale for you, but it's 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 all it's all good stuff to do, and it can all happen directly within LinkedIn. Great. Okay. I think we're set here. It's, I think we're done. I think we're done too. This is uh this is a good way to to wrap things up. So so next week um I will not be here. I will be on vacation. Uh, but Michael and Ted and who knows who else we'll be popping in and uh, and and sharing with you uh, some of the changes within LinkedIn that, that we've been noticing lately, as well as all sorts of tips and trip and tricks. So for uh, so for Ted and Michael, I'm Bob Woods. Thanks for joining us. And we will see you next week. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Bob. And have a great vacation. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. Bye -bye. Thanks, everybody.